Test, 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 one, two, one, two. Great. Good afternoon. Many thanks for joining our session today. It is a good decision. It's your decision, and it's a very good decision. So, uh, unfortunately, we have only this microphone, yeah, but uh, we will try our best here, and even for the camera. Therefore, um, we would like to talk today with you about an MLOps platform on top of OpenStack. My name is Thorsten Deutsch. I'm Senior Product Manager and Product Owner for Big Data and Artificial Intelligence on Open Telecom Cloud. One, two, three. Yes, it was right. Uh, and I have together with me uh, two colleagues. So therefore, first of all, is Bebe. Uh, also, I have microphones. Just have to... oh. Test, test. <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, my name is Bebe. Um, since 2019, uh, I'm working at T-Systems, initially as a data scientist, now as a cloud architect uh, in big data and AI squad. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ferenc Kukuczka. I've been working in the big data and AI squad for two years now, and I've been working on several AI projects in the past five years. Good, and we solved the solution with a microphone, perfect. Therefore, uh, if we are talking about artificial intelligence, uh, we have to talk about the underlying platform. And you know, everyone is talking about artificial intelligence in Europe. We are doing this as well. And we have a cloud where you can develop your own artificial intelligence algorithm um, directly in Europe. And therefore, we have this open telecom cloud. And this is the far first part of the speech to give you a short introduction about the OTC and about the USPs. Later on, we will come to some more details um, about uh, some a demo and, of course, how to set up a pipeline. So if we are talking about the OTC, the Open Telecom Cloud, we say we are GDPR compliant because we are uh, operated in Germany by a European company, and of course our um, data center are located in Europe, in Germany, in Amsterdam, and in Switzerland. Therefore, we can say we are GDPR compliant, and of course we have some audit data protection uh, according to European law. So that means here is the data privacy, data security already included. But this is only one thing. In addition, uh, everyone is talking about sovereignty, even today in our keynote, uh, you have seen this. Uh, and we are offering this as well. So like uh, data sovereignty, so you can take care of your own encryption of the data. Uh, as we are today on the Open Infra Summit, we are based on OpenStack. Therefore, uh, we have a techno technology, op op um, technology sovereignty and uh, in addition, uh, the operational sovereignty as we are operated by Deutsche Telekom AG. Uh, that's a short introduction about the um, two USPs of Open Telecom Cloud. So in addition, we are, of course, we are secure and uh, we are reliable. So that means we have a huge, uh, we have an SLA available on our services. Uh, therefore, you can have a look. Um, this is a summary of the Open Telecom Cloud. Uh, if we are talking about the USPs, then of course, uh, it's one thing, but I would like to say the US, USPs are really uh, great USPs, and you can see it on our numbers how huge we are. Um, we have more than 100,000 VMs for, uh, of our customer on our, on our Open Telecom Cloud, uh, and in, in, in addition, more than 140,000, 140 million uh, people are using the services on Open Telecom Cloud. Uh, you can imagine how big this is or how huge this number is. As uh, How many uh, citizens do we have in Germany? 87 82. million, 82. something like this one, yes. So 82, a lot of, yeah. And you can see uh, we are really uh, a cloud which is based in Europe for European uh, citizens. And uh, there are a lot of uh, people who are using on our, our Open Telecom Cloud. Let's go to Model Arts. Model Arts is an MLOps platform on, um, on Open Telecom Cloud, which is an end-to-end -end development platform for AI development. And everything starts with data. Therefore, uh, you can place your data on uh, our object storage and uh, choose just Model Arts and, uh, and use the data with model apps, arts. 
uh, most of this uh, preparation f is like data uh, pre-processing and all the stuff. You know, if you are developing an AI, algor AI algorithm, you need more or less 80% time for all this data preparations. And this can be done with model arts. As we are offering some tools like uh, data labeling, um, uh, version management, and uh, all this preparation stuff for the data. Uh, this is very simple. You can use it uh, via GUI on Open Telecom Cloud, and we can show you this later on. And as soon as you have done all this data pre-processing, data uh, labeling stuff, you can train your algorithm. This can be done with model arts as well. So this whole uh, model training stuff um, is very simple in model arts. And we are offering several functions like um, built-in algorithm, uh, pre-installed frameworks. Even you can take your uh, Docker containers with you. So um, that's very simple and you, you can use all cloud uh, resources like GPUs with uh, model arts and very simple. You don't need to take care of all this handling of these resources. So as soon as you have done this model training in general, you can uh, do this model uh, management like model evaluation, uh, precision tracking and uh, all the stuff with model arts. So, um, uh, the model art shows you, for example, the accuracy and uh, all some, some more figures um, how, uh, how your model is working. Um, and uh, in addition, um, as soon as you have your trained, uh, you have done your la data labeling, you have done your training, the model evaluation, then you can deploy your model. Very simple with model arts and just a few clicks. So just click uh, like on a GUI or of course you can use the API. Uh, and it will take uh, two minutes and the API will de deploy directly on our cloud. So that means you don't need to take care of all this deployment. You don't need to take care of all this performance management. This is done inside of Model Arts. So deploy it very quickly on Open Telecom Cloud. So for this whole chain, um, everyone can do, can, uh, can do this and uh, it's very simple via GUI and API. So in addition, we are planning some kind of AI marketplace, which is currently not available, this is just in, in planning, where each customer can share his model with other customer. Um, so therefore, you don't need to train your own algorithm, even you can use all these models from other customers as well. So when we are talking about this whole process, which is uh, here, let's say, more or less simple on, on our slide deck, um, we have some different kind of user groups uh, in, f in the AI development. So even in this round, we have some um, guys who have a huge experience, but even some guys who never done some experience on a console. And therefore, we are offering different type of function, functions. Um, one case, and that's the typical case, is I love coding. Yes, you have a lot of experience. You know how to develop this. Uh, you can use um, all this uh, built-in frame or the, the pre-installed frameworks. You can uh, use uh, Jupyter Notebook, which is uh, very simple to use. So uh, therefore, we are offering all these features uh, um, for this, um, let's say, experience group, uh, but you don't need to take care of all this uh, resource handling in the backend. So that's the first group. Second group is uh, you already have some experience, but you just would like to deploy a model very quickly. Um, so in this case, you can use a built-in algorithm like ResNet, which is available. So a lot of built-in algorithm for image classification or object detections are available and can be used. You just need to upload your data to OBS and then use it very simple in model arts. And the case three, and uh, yeah, you just would like to uh, use a model and train it very quickly so you don't have any experience, you can use model arts. You just uh, need, let's say, 30 minutes time and a little bit data, and you can train your alg algorithm uh, by your own. So that's very simple, 30 minutes, everyone can do that via GUI, um, and of course, we have some examples for you. So. As you can see, we are offering with Model Arts a lot of uh, features and services for different kind of user groups. Um, and therefore, we will come now to Bebe. Thanks, Thanks Thorsten. So, 
so as Thorsten has mentioned earlier, so Model Arts is an AI platform for AI life cycle measurement. Uh, it can be used for image annotation. Uh, for example, like marking the critical factor in the medical images. Uh, it can also be used for uh, like algorithm development and uh, uh, model training via notebook instance uh, service, as well as further developing AI products. Uh, for example, auxiliary diagnosis for COVID-19 and for cervical cancer. Um, we have shown uh, model arts actually covers several sections and uh, Today, I will mainly focus on the case three, which is auto-learning part, and in model arts, we call it XML. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so in model arts, like the auto-learning part is called XML. It covers three projects at this moment. We can simply click create project, then we will create image classification projects. Uh, Torsten mentioned earlier that we can use a preloaded data set saved on OBS. So, but uh, for saving the time, we were just looking at the existing image classification project, which is called XML COVID-19. Uh, it covers over 100,000 uh, lung CT images with three different labels, like pneumonia, like normal, and COVID-19. By simple click the train button, we will reach the training configuration, and here we can setting up all the training uh, parameters. So we have already an existing trained model. We trained before, and in the training model page, we will see all the training results, like all the details, like uh, the training accuracy, F1 score, and, uh, and other details. By simply click the deploy, we can deploy a real-time service either on a CPU or a GPU instance, and it also supports the auto stop. Uh, we can look at the deploy service, and this is the service that we have deployed before, and we can redeploy it, and after clicking OK, we will see the deployment task is already submitted and the service is deploying. Um, but by this, I would also show the, uh, the service deployment within Model Arts. As you can see here, the service, uh, real-time service management covers all the usage guide and configuration and monitoring and other details. So everything is in the service uh, deployment management. And we can also use this uh, like simple example to test our, uh, our model, how it performs. We uploaded a COVID-19 CT data and after a few seconds, we will see the prediction results. And as you can see here, it also said like highly could be a COVID-19 uh, uh, image. So now we go back to the XML part and actually in the, in the deploy service page, we will have the same uh, inference services. We can play with uh, uh, the other, uh, let's say, other mm, medical images and to check it. So what I want to mention it here is that so once we have this uh, real-time service running on Open Telecom Cloud, we can do further development. Uh, in the next slides, I will show a very simple medical web page which built beyond the uh, real-time service that we seen in the last slide. So this is a, this is a how that how the connection between Open Telecom Cloud and the food AI products. So it's a very simple uh, examples. And uh, that's all about uh, XML. I only covers the XML part. So uh, 
Now I will give the time to my colleague uh, Ferenc. He will cover more sections of the model arts and also he will present how to build uh, AI pipelines within Open Telecom model arts service with OpenStack extensions. Thank you. Um, here I will show you a quick demo about our OpenStack-based model arts automation pipeline. The most important thing to note is that uh, what you will see is a result of an automation script that just invokes OpenStack commands and uh, replaces those lots of clickings we would do when creating a full AI pipeline uh, on the GUI. So this solution is uh, automated and uh, much faster. Here you can see the main steps. I will iterate through uh, in the following uh, minutes. So first I will create a data set, uh, then I will label it. After that comes the creation of the training job from that labeled data set. Then I will build a model from that train job. And um, after that, the last step is uh, deploy that um, built model uh, as a real-time service. Here you can see my automation script um, with the OpenStack commands, um, variable initializations as path definitions. Uh, when looking at the path definitions, I'd like to show you that in object storage service, or OBS, which is our S3 style storage system. So this, in OBS, those data and uh, work folders are completely empty, uh, whose uh, parts are defined in the shell script. So as you can see, the data folder is empty. Here I will store all the uh, pictures from the flower, flower, flower pictures for this data set, and the work folder is also empty. This will contain the um, annotations, the labels, the manifest files, so all the metadata for the labeling. So I go back to the um, automation script and show you the other parts as well. So uh, the dataset creation command is there, the uh, train job creation, the showing the train job, so uh, attributes, log messages, uh, and um, everything that are necessary uh, for the training. So. Um, this is my uh, automation script. Uh, I will exit uh, from it and uh, run this script. Um, here you can see this uh, test uh, argument. The argument test uh, means that the word test will be in the name of the uh, data set, service, so to make this uh, unique. Uh, after that, I'm going to the um, dashboard of Model Arts um, again and show you the main ser services of Model Arts. So data set, notebooks, um, training jobs, and model management. Uh, we will use three of them, data set, uh, training jobs, and model management. Notebooks contains the Jupyter notebooks. Data set uh, can be found under uh, data management and data sets. I will click on that. And um, uh, here you can see uh, that uh, MA chain DS test, uh, which the open uh, stack script um, named it. So this is our uh, um, data set. As you can see, it's uh, labeling type is image classification. This is what I uh, set it in the open stack uh, script and the labeling progress is 0%. I will have a look at the automation script. Uh, uh, it's still in progress as you can see because it's creating the labels. So it's not finished yet. That's why we have this 0% uh, of uh, labeling. But in a few seconds, um, when I uh, refresh um, the data set dashboard, then you can see that it's already labeled. So um, 100 slash 100, and uh, the last step is in progress, which is the publishing of the data set. So in a few seconds, uh, this should be also uh, finished, and uh, we have a, a newly created data set that is uh, containing 100 flower images, and I will show you uh, how it looks like. So I click on the data set name, and as you can see, the labeling progress is 100, all zero unlabeled, so we uh, have labeled all the flower images. Uh, here you can see tulips, dandelions, sunflowers, daisies, and roses. So these five categories of flowers, uh, 20 images of each, uh, altogether uh, 100 uh, images. Um, I show you a couple of them. So um, we are going to need these flowers because we want to train a model um, that uh, recognizes these flowers based on the flower type. So the corresponding labels can be found under the images, as you can see. Some roses, tulips, um, basically uh, that's uh, uh, all about the flowers. So we have. Um, uh, all these, uh, we are going back to the dataset dashboard, and here you can see this input dataset path and output dataset path. So if you remember, um, I showed you uh, in the OBS uh, that they were completely empty. So uh, now they are not. Uh, they uh, got populated with files. Uh, I will show you that. Um, in the dataset versions, uh, we have the storage path, as you can see. So this is the OBS URL. Um, 
which um, defines the location of the manifest file. The manifest file contains uh, the annotations uh, of our uh, data set. So I um, go into uh, that uh, folder, uh, data and uh, import folder. Here you can see the five categories of flowers in uh, this form, five folders of flowers. Uh, and in each folder, we have 20 images, just to show you uh, one, uh, how it looks. So I uh, clicked on a sunflowers. Uh, the URL, and as you can see, uh, this is how uh, Sunflower GPG um, is um, uh, present in the data set. So I uh, go back to the test pipeline. I showed you the data uh, folder, which contains the data sets. Now uh, I showed you the other one, which is the Ver folder. So this uh, has the V1 folder, which is the version one. Uh, if you remember, we were in the data set versions. And I click on the manifest file. Uh, this is also accessible via um, URL, so I click on that and open it in Notepad++. So as you can see, the annotations are there, the uh, name of the uh, image, the uh, annotator, so who was it annotated by, uh, the image classification, the path, uh, the usage of it, which is train in our case now. So we have this in JSON format and 100 elements of um, uh, data sets, so flowers. This is how the um, manifest file looks, so we are going to the next step. Uh, we have a working data set, and uh, remember that our automation script is working in the background, so I go to the training management, train jobs. Now you can see that it's running, so its status is running, which means it's not ready yet. I click on, uh, it's a, or uh, training job is one in the top, as you can see from the date, so I click on its name to show you the configurations of it. So um, we, it's uh, still running, we have the version which is one, um, the specifications can be interesting for you, uh, which uh, we used for the training of it. Uh, we are using the uh, ResNet as the algorithm, and the AI engine is TensorFlow, and we are using Python for that. So I uh, go back to the training job dashboard, and um, as you can see, it's already successful, means uh, it's finished. So uh, now we have the data set ready with the train job ready. So the third step is the uh, model management models. So let's see, our model is there. As you can see, MA chain MO test, which we named in the OpenStack script. So um, it uh, has been created. I will show you uh, some of the details of this uh, model. Uh, you know, we have this basic information, but the parameter configurations can be more interesting for you because it defines what we have as an input uh, for this um, um, task. So it's an image, as you can see, it's a flower image. And what the output will look like, it's a predicted label. So uh, which type of flower we have from the uh, five categories and the scores, uh, you know, uh, how many percentage it gives to each category because, you know, it can be important for the training if we have 50-50% uh, for two flower types because they are that similar. So now we know uh, how to fine tune or hyperparameter tune our model. So uh, as you can see, we have this um, basic infos as the train job, so uh, runtime environment, uh, AI engine as well, and uh, the OBS path, uh, which I showed you a couple of um, uh, seconds ago. So the last step is the service deployment. Um, in Model Arts, we have two ways for that, real-time service and uh, batch service. Since we want to uh, get our images predicted in real time, we are going to use the real-time services, not the batch one. And as you can see, it's deploying 9%. So this is the most time-consuming part next to the training of this whole uh, Model Arts automation chain pipeline. Um, its name is uh, MA uh, Chain uh, SL Test. So uh, if it's uh, working fine, then let's see the OpenStack script. Uh, as you can see, it's finished running. So let uh, uh, me uh, show you a couple of things. The dataset version, the train jokes, the looks, the attributes, everything can be found uh, in there if you are curious about something. It's already 19%. Uh, so while it's loading, I'd like to show you the sub left sub window uh, in the model arts. So data management, uh, training management, model arts, uh, service deployment. So all these were defined in the shell script in the OpenStack. Uh, automation script, but you know uh, the main difference that uh, we have this magenta style um, cool looking uh, GUI where we have to click uh, from um, uh, these uh, buttons if we want to get from A to B, but uh, the other way is the model arts uh, OpenStack uh, CMD uh, way, uh, which can be automated. It's black and white, but you know it's much faster. And uh, while I was uh, talking, uh, this whole um, deploy uh, has been um, this whole service has been deployed successfully, and we are going to use the prediction tab for the inference. So I hit on the prediction, but you know, you can have the question based on what should we predict. So I'm looking for some images in Google that our model has uh, never seen before. So, you know, uh, because um, that's how we uh, use this whole inference. Mm based on images that our model has never uh, seen. So I downloaded one daisy uh, locally. Uh, I will uh, upload it later. And one tulip as well. I will upload that one as well to um, Model Arts uh, service deployment to see what the label will be. So it's already uploaded the tulip. I hit on predict. 
It's scanning a few seconds, and as you can see, it's predicted the label is tulip, uh, and the score is 100%. This can be understood because, you know, tulips are quite unique and um, different from the other flowers, uh, but the other one, the daisy, can be a bit uh, trickier, because if you uh, think about it, daisies uh, have a little similarity with uh, sunflowers. So let's uh, upload that uh, daisy image as well. Um, it's being uploaded. I also uh, hit the predict button now. And now comes the scanning. And in a few seconds, this predict label is daisy. As you can see, the percentage is 97% and 2% uh, to sunflower, which can be understood because the mentioned uh, similarity. Okay, many thanks. So we have spoken about the Open Telecom Cloud. We have spoken about the ML Ops platform, uh, model arts on the Open Telecom Cloud, and how to set up an AI pipeline. We are ready here for all your questions. Please use the microphones if you have some questions. Otherwise, after the speech, we are here as well and answering your questions. One, two, three. Everyone would like to go to the microphone, right? Yeah, many, many thanks. One, two, one, two. Uh, it works. So, uh, could you please elaborate a bit, like, what's underlying this MLOps platform? Like, how exactly is OpenStack or whatever you use is actually used in there? Yeah, some technical details. So, we developed this uh, with our vendor uh, together. So. Um, therefore, we, we can say this platform is directly developed for Open Telecom Cloud, so we can't move this directly to another cloud and say this is uh, yeah, behind. What we're offering is uh, we are offering some, uh, let's say uh, we are offering this open source framework like TensorFlow, and even we are taking care that all this algorithm which are available, of course, are uh, open source. Um, and in addition, uh, we are taking care to, yeah, to choose like uh, standard containers, like Docker containers and all this stuff. So really we are taking care of all this uh, open source mindset. I have a follow-up question, I'm sorry. So, uh, totally fine, uh, <laughs> but you need, you need to use the microphone, yeah? otherwise uh, uh, someone kill me here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah perfect, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, regarding the MLAPS platform itself, the uh, model operationalization functionality is pretty neat, but uh, what about experimentation management within it? Sorry? Sorry. Experimentation management mm -hmm. for MLAPS platform, it, that, that doesn't support it? Like, what's the functionality there? Would like to someone uh, Ex answer? Experimentation. Ex I, I didn't get this. Yeah, answer. I did not get it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so uh, part of whole machine learning pipeline or say process is uh, the very last piece, last mile, you might want to test multiple models at the same time and mm -hmm. you want to observe like which works better and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And hey. you want to, like, it's not just champion challenging stuff. It's mm -hmm. not only about observability, but it's also about keeping track of all the changes you made along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it goes. Some like A and B testing. A and B uh, no, testing no. plus an, uh, a ledger for all the experiments that um, you've done. And so I think you are talking about like, so when you build with different algorithms, you have different models and how to compare it. So actually Model Arts offers this uh, comparison. You can, you can also do it within Model Arts. And meanwhile, like each of the model, every time you train one, you will have a, a new model and we have model management section to manage the different models. So like a version control of the different models. So that's a part. And besides of this, uh, let's say uh, we offer like like simple click to deploy to a real time service. But meanwhile, how to which model you deploy and when the service need to be stopped also is fully controlled by the end users. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. And of course, we are extending this platform all the time. So this is just the beginning, as we are now in the beta phase, and this will end. So this will be released as public soon, and I can do some marketing as well. So of course, you can use it free of charge, uh, with limited resources, of course. Yeah, We need to take care, but just training, just one training job, uh, one influence job in parallel, but you can use it directly uh, free of charge. 
And of course, we will extend this all the time with some additional features. Therefore, if you would like to use it, go to our homepage. Uh, and uh, of course, you can share your feedback on our community uh, portal with us. Therefore, many thanks. Oh, no, yeah, there's still one question. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Happy. So, uh, Happy. Yeah, you were speaking of uh, Docker container. So, for all your platform, are you using Kubernetes on top of OpenStack? Uh, so, yeah. And um, do you see a value of you are showing some um, OpenStack commands? So, uh, based on the feedback of customer, is it useful to have this uh, unique CLI for uh, managing VMs, managing uh, AI workload? Is something you see some uh, you get some uh, good feedback, or is it useful? So last but not least, it's al always good to use this kind of open source because um, if you are using um, or if you are developing your artificial intelligence algorithm, you need to take care that you are not only based on one application or not only on one cloud. Or even you need to take this with you, and uh, therefore, it's from my point of view, we need an underlying platform which is, uh, let's say, open and which gives you the possibility to take everything with you. Yeah, let's say but these in simple words. Because you said, so it's uh, to the question of uh, underlying components. Uh, it's not ML flow, it's not Kube flow, it's something more proprietary uh, Huawei. So uh, it's why, um, just to understand, yeah, yeah. you said it's open about the, the way of acting, but perhaps you, you don't have other uh, communities contributing to like uh, uh, to modules to your solution. Or you are, you are perhaps taking from other communities uh, on the MLOps. Uh, 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 technologies. Or it's your own technology, in fact, you said. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah it's, it's our own technology, but we are taking care to, uh, in, to use this uh, open infrastructure, let's say, the open stack, and therefore we created this pipeline based on open stack with open stack commands. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, many thanks. We are still here for uh, some more questions, uh, but enjoy your day, and many thanks for joining our session today. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.